Hey everyone, in this video we're going to walk through how to set up Google Ads Enhanced Conversions for Shopify since Shopify's checkout extensibility upgrade in August 2024. If you haven't done this yet, your conversion tracking may be broken because Shopify's tracking scripts moved from the checkout section to custom pixels under customer events. So we're going to start off by setting up a custom pixel under the customer events section. Then we're gonna use that to install Google Tag Manager. And finally, we're actually gonna make this really easy for you because instead of having to build all of the tags and variables and stuff in Tag Manager from scratch, I'm going to share a container template with you so you can just upload one file and it's gonna have almost everything you need to get your conversion tracking launched in just a few minutes. So let's get started. The first step in adding Google Tag Manager to Shopify's new checkout and setting up enhanced conversions is to go to settings here in your store and instead of going to checkout where we would have set this up before Shopify's update in August, 2024, we're gonna to go to this customer events section. And so the first thing that we'll need to do is add a custom pixel and we'll call this GTM custom pixel. And so we'll add this here. And what we'll do in this code section is add code that will load Google Tag Manager and also act as an event listener so that we can detect events like purchases, add to carts and really anything else that folks will be doing on the site. And we can get this directly from Shopify. So I'm going to copy this code right here and I'll link to it in the description as well. So I'm going to copy this code that they have for us here, which includes a section for tag manager and pretty much all of the main e-com events that someone will be doing on your website. So I'm going to select all of that and then replace it with the code from Shopify. We'll scroll back up to the top here. You can include this for now. I'm just going to delete it. This is instructions for Google consent mode V2. And so in this case, it'll grant everything by default. I'm just going to remove it since I'm not working on that for now. The second step is going to be to replace these uh, placeholders right here with the actual ID for your tag manager container. So I'm going to copy that right there and then select that portion and we'll keep moving forward to our setup in Google Tag Manager. Now, before we go over to Tag Manager, we're going to save the custom pixel right here and then we'll click connect. And this is important because unless you click connect, it can be an easy step to miss. But if you don't do that, then it won't actually load the custom pixel on your website. So we'll click the connect button right there. And so at this point, it's going to be loading Tag Manager and we'll also be able to listen to all of the events listed in this block of code. Next, we'll go over to Tag Manager and here we'll need to actually build the tags that will send purchases to Google Ads and any other platforms that we want to. And so instead of building all of that out manually, we're going to upload a container file, which I'll include the uh, link to that you can download as well. And so when we go to import container over here, this will be a huge time saver since we won't have to build out all of the individual tags and variables. I'm gonna choose my container file and I'm gonna paste that right here. So this is my container file that I just wrote and we'll include this in the default workspace. And when you're choosing the import option, instead of overriding it, I highly recommend that you use merge and then rename any conflicting tags, triggers, and variables. And this will just make sure that if you upload this file to your tag miniature container, if you happen to have any existing tags, triggers, or variables that have the same name as mine, then it won't overwrite any of your existing pieces. So we're going to add this to our workspace. And at this point, we have all of the data layer variables that we need a trigger for whenever someone completes the purchase event, the enhanced conversions variable that we'll need, and a conversion linker and conversion tag for purchases in Google Ads. So that saves us a ton of work. And I'll show a couple of examples here just so you can see how this works. But this email data layer variable, which we need for enhanced conversions. You can see that this directly matches up with the email variable here in the checkout completed section and the checkout completed event, which is what is fired whenever someone completes a purchase. Our trigger right here is designed off of that. And you can see that the enhanced conversions variable basically just contains all of those data layer variables um, referenced from the script that we'll need for uh, Google to match someone up with an existing account. Next, we're going to configure our Google Ads tag. And this really won't take us too much time at this point. So we'll go to the conversion purchase tag. And at this point, we'll just need to update the conversion ID and conversion label to match your existing conversion action. So we're going to go to my test Google Ads account here. 
and we're just going to go to the sidebar and then click summary under goals. And if you have an existing conversion action, then if you've watched this far, I'll give you a tip, but I would highly recommend creating a new conversion action if you already have one that is working. And the main reason why is because since we're basically going to be sending some additional, I just recommend if you're doing a different implementation, leave that existing one in place, create a new conversion action, and then let that one accrue data for about 30 days so that Google has a comparable amount of data to go off of with your new enhanced conversion data. That way your smart bidding strategies aren't uh, adjusted in any way. Because switching everything over to a brand new conversion action that doesn't have at least 30 days of historical data behind it can throw off your smart bidding. Now, I'm not in that situation since this is just a test account, so I'm not going to create a new conversion action. But what I will do is I'll just use this existing one. And so once you create your new conversion action, if you need to do that, then you'll go to tag setup and then use Google Tag Manager. And then we'll just copy this conversion ID right here. And we'll place that in the first field and then copy the conversion label and we'll place that in the second field. And so you can see that the other fields are already filled out with the variables that we uploaded into the container. And for conversion value, this will use the subtotal, which is basically the amount someone pays at ch uh, checkout without taxes and shipping. And this is typically what I recommend to anyone that I work with since we don't necessarily want the account to optimize for like additional taxes and shipping fees. You just want it to optimize based off of what people are buying. Then you have your order ID for transaction IDs and currency, and then the enhanced conversions variable right here. And you can see all the fields filled out. At this point, we just need to save and then you can publish and make sure that you publish your changes here. But at that point, you'll have a new conversion action set up that can measure enhanced conversions. And if your pixel is connected here, then that data should start flowing in shortly and you should start seeing that data start to pipe in by the next day if you're getting conversions on a consistent basis. And what I do like to point out is that if you're keeping an existing conversion action that isn't using enhanced conversions and this is your first enhanced conversion that you're adding to the account, then you'll probably see at the end of 30 days that the conversion action that is using the enhanced conversion data is actually showing more conversions in the account than your original conversion. So that number can vary. I would say with most folks that I work with, that number will be around five to 15% more conversions, but it's a great tool to add into your account and it's well worth taking the time to do this because that can mean that not only are you seeing more conversions reported, but if you're using smart bidding, which most folks are, then that means that the platform is able to optimize more easily to find other folks that are relevant potential customers. So anyway, thanks for watching. And if you found this useful, then I'd hugely appreciate a like and subscribe. Thanks.